Hey there YouTube, Superbrain AK here, and well, you are currently looking at my big giant TV in my living room, which I've got sitting there, and a little aerial, and we wee uh, sensor bar, and well, today I'm going to tell you about a DC UPS that I made for my networking equipment and the Wii. So down here is my network cabinet, as you can see, but let me tell you about my internet real quick. So network comes in, coax, cox from the wall, goes into a cable modem there, which goes into this 3010, which is running PF Sense, which goes into a switch and then there's another switch that one's POV which goes to an access point behind the TV and how all that gets power is from this power strip on the floor there and there's three things plugged in I don't know if you can see one, which is this, and there's two, that is uh, just a little like, three-prong extender, and then this, and you can see the last plug there, which goes to this little UPS, little uh, trip light 750 watt guy, which I have heavily modified, uh, <laughs> made its little buzzer. Uh, very quiet. It was extremely loud. Alright. Added some super caps. You can see them in there, all blue. And I put my 4S2P headway pack on it in parallel with the super caps. And you can see it's sitting right at 13.8. Nice. So, the UPS powers the 3010 running PF Sense, the PoE switch, and our file server. I don't know if you can see any hard drives inside there. But yeah, <laughs> no uh, rear fans because it's all passively cool. It's not, didn't have a... Uh, much heat. So that's what that has. Three things. Oh yeah, and the TV in itself. All the other things, let me go around to the front, are being powered from this little box, which I built myself from an old slim 3010 uh, power supply, which had an active power factor uh, failure. So, that gets mains power from this big 150 watt HP brick. That is the power brick from the uh, PoE switch. And then, so it gets mains power from that, and then it gets DC power straight off of the batteries. I don't know if you can see the little black and red cable, which has that inline fuse there, which is a 10 amp fuse, which goes straight onto the super caps. So, if the power goes out, the voltage went down, that went down, however, the UE switch is on, that switch is on, that's on, this computer's on, that works on, oh yeah, and our little Wii uh, remote chargers, which I 
put any loops in. The weed is still on. And everything's fine. So I will flip back on the power strip there. There we go. Charge back up. So, I will put you on the tripod and I'm going to disconnect it so I can show you more about what I built. Pardon me for the single take because editing is just too much work. Pull the Wii out. Unplug the core switch, technically. And unplug the DC UPS. I'll disconnect the main power. Should be able to pull this box and all the barrel jacks out. There we go. Three different barrel jacks and a little box. So I will bring you into my bedroom now. Also, this guy used to be in circuit, but uh, he's on the naughty list right now. He'll be in a new video in a later date. Alright. Back in the room. Here I have my little box. So, you can see it in a little more detail. So I've got the main output bus there. I've got the DC in, the mains DC in, and then I've got output terminal blocks and also another XE60 to uh, go to the Wii. So let me take you over to my little tablet, which has the schematic that I put together. Yay, I made a schematic for you. <laughs> this is available on my GitHub, superbrainak forward slash schematics. And this one is dcups.sch So here you can see uh, I don't didn't remember which exact UPS I had but it's the uh, trip light so you got mains in and then it's got the mains out to the other guys and then it charges the battery but first it connects to the super caps um, 16 2 volts it's not actually a hundred farads but that's what each of the caps are so whatever, I think, six or eight in series are, that's how many farads it would be. So it would be less than 100. And then this is our headway pack. And then there's the fuse going to the battery terminals. Well, going to the uh, battery cable. It's got an inline fuse there coming off of the battery. So the UPS charges the battery when it's plugged into mains. So my little circuit doesn't have to charge. And then it will use the power when the power mains is out. And the, my little device will use the mains, or use the battery when the mains is out. So you can see, I've got 
two ideal diode modules uh, pointing together instead of a double diode they're actually ideal diodes so when mains is on that uh, 19 volts it says 24 it's the same uh, so when the 20 volts is on that'll give it a higher voltage into the input and when the mains turns off it'll only have the battery voltage going to the input and the negatives are connected together to the ground which is connected to the case and here I have a LTC 3780 boost buck module which is your typical one you'll find on eBay which I tossed a bunch of heat sinks on which I'll show you in a few and then that goes to an XT60 which goes on to my little green output board there which is just some Vero board that I soldered up and you can see I've got a 2200 microfarad capacitor and a 330 microfarad capacitor which goes straight to one of the terminal blocks and then I've got some common mode chokes I've got three of them so that's just the negative going to the left side and then the positive going to the right side of the chokes and the same down here which goes to the XT60 so these four are the terminal blocks the little green screw in terminals and then this one goes to the XT60 which goes to the Wii and then I've got these 330 microfarad decoupling capacitors after the common mode chokes so it's a pretty simple design that gives a constant 12.1 volts out and I also set an 11 volt under voltage lockout so yeah let me show you inside so I will pull this off and tangle the wires a little bit and I don't know if you wanted to see the underside it's pretty simple it's mostly point to point to the capacitors there and I even use the uh, capacitor legs to bridge between and some spare copper wires I just got the negative there going over and around and then this is the positive going to the big capacitor which goes out to the inductor and then all the other common mode chokes yep so take this out oh you know what I forgot to put in the schematic the 9 volt power for the the 9 volt power for the uh, Wiimote chargers I'll show you that inside Oop, this side I also did not add the fan controller but I will have those updated in the schematic alright so the lid of it just pops off goes to the side and down and there you can see inside so you've got the uh, fan that came with the power supply I have that running over here and then I have teeny tiny little board which is the same as I actually pulled it from one of the uh, 1500 watt boost converters so there's the other one that I have and I did do a complete schematic on that one so let me look uh, show you how the power runs inside here so we've got the two connectors this is for the laptop charger 
And this one's for the batteries, which go to these two ideal diode modules. Those get combined together to do the power here. That power goes over here to the LTC3780 module, which I mounted on some standoffs, at least I did on two of them. That one and that one down there. <laughs> also added some more bulk capacitance on it. So, power comes in, either 19 volts or 13.3. And then this converts it up or down to be the 12 volts on the output. And I did have to remove the uh, current regulation because this is you know, negative ground, so I didn't want current flowing elsewhere. And I also bypassed the fuse in there. I just put a piece of copper and soldered it all down. So, yeah. And then the 12 volts goes out to this XT60, which goes to my little green board. And then it also comes up to, I don't know if you can see it in there, shoved in the heatsink there is that little fan control module which goes over here to this connector which has a capacitor which goes over to the fan so when this heats up it'll turn the fan on and keep it cool the 12 volts also goes along this black and yellow wire over here which is just a simple uh lm 2596 buck converter, which takes the 12 down to 9. So, there you have it. Very simple DC to DC converter. And I'll show you the schematic for that fan controller, which is actually a pretty simple design. Uh, I had it open. Open project, auto fan switch, and there you can see it. Yeah, it's a very simple board. It has the 12 volts coming in. That goes to this 1K resistor, which goes over to here which is a two and a half volt reference diode that gets a voltage divider here so that this so when this is 10 volts this is two and a half volts which goes to the reference input so this is regulating this connection here at 10 volts that 10 volts goes over to the thermistor which you know changes resistance due to the heat, which goes over, makes another voltage divider with this 10k. So between here and here, it's a voltage divider between the thermistor and a 10k resistor, which goes to the input of another 2.5 volt reference. So when this point goes higher than 2.5 volts, this reference will start pulling low through this 4.3k resistor, Pulling the base of this PNP transistor low, turning it on, which takes the 12 volts, goes through it, out to the fan. Very simple. So, I was going to show you it uh, working on the bench, but I think I've run out of time, and I have the schematic now, so I think you can believe me that it works. I did test in the... Uh, very beginning. So, without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers!